Gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, today, part two of high cutting. Well, no, part two of, of converting a helmet. Today, we are going to high cut, quote unquote high cut, a, uh, the ACH helmet. As you can see, uh, where is it? I already started. Let me lean over. Uh, I already started because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing. I didn't want to go at this blind and just screw around for 30 minutes on a video. So, here we are. I did half of the helmet. That's what it's gonna look like. We have one more half to go. So this is what it's gonna turn out like. I have what you need to make it happen. Uh, let me bring you in and talk about it. Talk about the parts, tools, tools first. First thing first, to cut one of these, get yourself a jigsaw. If you don't already have one, use a jigsaw. Um, and when you have, with your jigsaw, go for the finest metal blade you can get your hands on. Uh, this is a Diablo brand. You can see I've already burned this one up a little bit. I have two, hopefully we can use this one for this next cut. If we can't, then I'll have to grab the other one. That's just the way to go. From what I understand, Kevlar chews through these things real bad. It's just the way it is. So, uh, jigsaw with a fine, fine, fine tooth metal blade. That's the first part. That is to cut. Um, obviously, second part, throw your arc rails on the side, draw a line at the bottom of the arc rail, that'll give you a stencil to cut on. Third, do not breathe in Aramid. I don't know how bad it is for you, but I assume it's not good, and you're gonna be dusting up the place with burnt, burning, cut Aramid fibers, Kevlar fibers. Use a respirator when you're cutting this. Uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth, uh, we're gonna be painting this one with, uh, this is Krylon Camo. I went for the dark green color of their Krylon. That's what I chose. To uh, mop up the edges, we're going to use uh, Marine Weld from JB. It's a two-part epoxy resin. Uh, from what I understand, well, this one in particular is made for uh, fiberglass type materials, boat hulls, i.e. Um, so I think this is going to work perfect. Actually, actually, I already ran a test on it. You can see it's it's the white stuff, and uh, it is perfect for this. Spread it on nice and thin. I'm gonna probably use a, a brush. Brush it on nice and thin around the sides, and it will lock those fibers in. Lastly, I've decided I am not going to try to reuse the old rubber gasket around the outside. So what we're gonna do is cut, this is basically Flex Seal. This is Gorilla brand Flex Seal. You get more for the same, for uh, cheaper. It was a little bit cheaper than Flex Seal pricing. Um, it's not sticky on the gray side until you peel it. So we're gonna lay it out, cut the proper length and width so it will wrap around the inside lining of the helmet. Um, this, basically what we're trying to do with this is seal off that seam so no water gets in. The epoxy should do that as well. Technically, you probably could leave a rough edge if you put enough epoxy on. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. It'll help a little bit and it'll give it a nicer, cleaner aesthetic look. So that's what we're gonna use for the seal. Anything else? I think that's it. Let me get this thing bolted back into the vise and uh, we'll get started cutting. All right, Kevlar is cut. Uh, I switched to a new blade halfway through just to see. I don't know that this is as dull as I thought it was. I think I could still make a couple more cuts with this one, um, but <clears throat> there we go. So next up, we need to seal the uh, aramid fibers 
to make sure they don't continue peeling now. Um, so like I said, I have marine grade weld, JB weld. Let me get a piece of cardboard. Okay, so real quick, here is, <coughs> funny enough, here's what I found is the easiest. Instead of trying to use that little thing, uh, finger paint. Go ahead, get some on your finger and push it into the pores of the, uh, the Amarid, the Kevlar. Um, this is actually a very simple way. I, <laughs> I'm glad I figured this out. And because there are some frays along here, I'm gonna go ahead, I got plenty of it. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, epoxy the entire edge, inside and out. Remember, if you get a little bit of this on the inside, it's not a big deal. Um, we're gonna wrap it with that uh, flex glue, flex seal, whatever it's called. But yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this works pretty well, actually. One day later, uh, because I got too busy last night, and we're back. And let me tell you, this uh, this marine weld epoxy is, is good stuff. It's a little bit rubber. I don't wanna say rubbery. It's not super, super hard. It's not like glass hard where it'll break. It's got a little bit of give to it, uh, so it'll flex a little with the helmet. It's perfect. What we gotta do next? Um, I'm gonna take a tape, fabric tape. I'm gonna measure it around the outside, get a rough idea of how long the uh, piece of tape needs to be. And then uh, I'll go ahead and cut it. Uh, we also need to figure out the width of the tape, which will be something along the lines of, let's say two inches, a two inch wide piece of tape will give us exactly what we need to wrap around. So let's figure out how long this is gonna be. And uh, we'll start from the middle of the back. Actually, we'll start from the corner, let's do that. This is just gonna be rough. I'm gonna cut it a little longer to be safe. So we're at, say, uh, oh, we started over here. Uh, we're at 33, I'm gonna go 35, just to give us more in case it's needed, uh, and then two inches wide. Let me go cut. All right, here's what we got. Um, so I found that it's actually because of the shape of everything, it's better to do it in pieces. Measure out a piece that fits the back, put it on. Measure out a piece for the ear, put it on. Um, but it looks okay. Uh, it's a sealant, so it will seal. Just make sure you run your finger around. Press it all in. Yes, it's not perfect, and it does probably does not look as good as the rubber. I have a feeling once we get it painted, though, you won't really notice. All right, uh, last thing is we're gonna paint everything. I'm gonna, oh, actually, no, before we paint, we gotta get this drilled. So let me figure out what size uh, hole we need to make. I'm gonna mount this, get it drilled in, and then we're gonna paint. So let me get this figured out. Holes are drilled on the front, it's time to paint. Uh, I'm gonna take this over to a box. We're gonna paint this both front and back so it's covered. Paint the whole thing. I put the bolts in so the bolts get painted as well. From what I can tell, you guys can't see it, but uh, these match pretty well, so I'm not gonna paint these. I'll waste my time, and this also matches pretty well, so. Get this and this in the paint booth. I'll be right back. And here's what you're left with. Uh, this spray paint looks great. <laughs> I'm really impressed with it. 
Uh, the coloring wise, I think it looks awesome. Not super, super happy with the tape. It'll work. It's just not the best thing I've ever done. Um, if anybody out there is watching this and you have an idea of where to pick up a proper seal, let me know. I, in time, wouldn't mind peeling this back off and putting on a proper, like, U seal. But uh, no, this looks great. So last thing, we need to pull the screws back out that are stuck to the tape. Oh God. Um, we're gonna need to ugh, uh, put these back in with some Loctites and the hardware and the interior stuff. Uh, and then I'll show you how to put on pads because that's the last thing is we're gonna get the Velcro on. Let me find some Loctite. All right, high cut's done. Last thing we have to do is install our pads. Pads, Velcro. So, as far as I can tell, one piece goes here. So the ones with the, uh, with the cutout go here and here on your temple. The rounded piece will then connect in and go over the top. And we'll figure out the rest because I'm not sure. <laughs> Here is your finished high cut. Um, let me tell you, it looks it looks freaking awesome. The pads on the inside need a little bit more adjusting to get right, but man, this thing looks awesome and it is super, super comfortable. And the main test, well, let me take this off first. Here's the main test, because this is what I will be using it for. Here we go. Let me put it on for you guys so you can see what it looks like. Oh, bald head time. I'm sweating. It's hot. Here is our finished die cut. Um, it's, I'm actually really excited. It's really, really nice. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, all in all, put it on my head so I can stop the glow from happening. Uh, we're talking about three pounds after you cut the ears out. I just weighed it right at three pounds. Um, I don't know the exact price, but magically I will edit in how much this cost with the helmet, the extra blade that I needed to cut it with, and then all the Chinese accessories. I will run that number in here. Um, and it's comfortable. It's, it's very, very comfortable. Uh, it's not too heavy. I know a lot of guys, oh, three pounds is heavy. If I were hiking all day, yeah, this would probably get heavy and it doesn't breathe as well. But it's not bad. Keep yourself hydrated. This thing will... I'll do what it needs to do. Last thing for me that's important is how this works. There, connected, down. So this is the knockoff shroud. This is a real G24. And my DTMVGs, boom, right on there. It's a little front heavy, obviously. I would, uh, normally I'd be running a counterweight, um, but works perfect, absolutely perfect. Very, very happy with how this turned out. Now, uh, if ever push comes to shove, you ever got to worry about shrapnel or uh, low velocity pistol rounds, you're good. So don't be afraid to do this yourselves. You'll see a lot of people on the internet saying, oh, he's going to ruin the Kevlar. It most likely won't. I mean, your mileage may vary. You may not want to do this. For the price here versus going to, you could either go to AliExpress if you want to buy a Chinese made helmet. The benefit here is, you know, it's US made, 
most likely DuPont brand Kevlar. If it's not DuPont, then it's an American made uh, um, Aramid, which is Kevlar. It's the generic name for Kevlar, American made, versus buying from AliExpress. Uh, you don't know exactly what their quality is, just the way it is. But the accessories, all the accessory wise, looks great. Um, I'll run in. Uh, if you guys want to see, actually, I'll do one more video real quick after this, uh, maybe midweek next week, showing uh, how I like to run my helmets. Um, ear Pro, I'll run, I'll throw my Ear Pro on, um, I'll move all my stuff over, and I'll just do a quick video of like my helmet setup. Show you guys what I think, but there you go. Do it yourself. Get your, if you can find one of these uh, ACH helmets for a reasonable price, pick it up, cut it, you're, I'm happy. I'm extremely happy. I think it looks awesome uh, and it gives you know, for whatever reason if you got debris flying around from a tornado at least your uh, noggin is protected so there you go i hope you guys like it i will catch you guys on the next build see ya